Again, I know AI is a big thing right now, but what we're not really putting together is it's a convergence of several technologies coming together. Not only AI, but um, the ecosystem of things. Some people call it the internet of things. But we also have biotechnology that's coming into play. And these three things, normally we call it a general purpose technology, like when electricity was created, that was massive. Or when the internet came out, that was massive, that was one. We've got three of them merging together at one time. And that's gonna be interesting to see what happens. It's gonna be exciting, but also kind of a little scary, I think. In the last 12 months, I really have seen a lot of people jump a little too quickly on a, some of these AI solutions without checking necessarily if they're a good fit, if it's a good business benefit for them, and if the answers that they're relying upon are in fact going to be accurate. It's incredibly important, again, to understand how these platforms work so that you understand what they can best be suited to help you accomplish. But again, always keep yourself in the driver's seat, making those important decisions, and always keeping in mind what's strategically important for the work that you are doing, so that you make sure you know where you're driving, even if you do have some help along the way. I think the biggest trend in GRC over the next year or two will be that every organization will end up having one of these continuous compliance tools, which allows you to monitor that you're in compliance or out of compliance. Now, that's not a bad thing, because it sounds, it sounds like the compliance police are going to be working every day. We actually need continuous compliance. We need continuous assurance that our controls are doing what they're supposed to be doing, because the threat landscape is changed from 10 years ago, which is why these continuous GRC tools will actually bring a whole security benefit to the organization. And that's the biggest trend I'll see, is that we get more integrated in day-to-day -day operational management because we, we can provide that oversight and say, we don't think that controls as effective as, as it should be at the moment. Disruptions are always interesting. Again, I'm going to go back to LLM, which is, is very interesting, both from a, a, a defensive and offensive side. So LLMs are starting to be used a lot more. If I'm thinking about offensive security, which I do, then there's a lot more thought towards, are there LLMs out there that are specifically focused on uh, attacking, performing ethical hacking? So can they help you do that? If you're making web requests and getting responses and trying to see what security looks like, can you feed that into an LLM? Is it gonna give you some good indications of what the vulnerabilities are, how exploitable those vulnerabilities are? Is it gonna help you hack into something? That is a very interesting, very upcoming topic. If you want to be an amazing IT pro, even if, uh, let's say you work in Microsoft 365 and you only work with software as a service, knowing the basics of networking, knowing the basics of identity. So even if you do something very niche, having a high level overview of how everything else works inside an enterprise environment, can save you hours of troubleshooting because sometimes there can be a problem somewhere in your enterprise stack that has nothing to do with what do you do on a daily basis, but understanding how everything else works, you have a really good idea on who to go talk to or what that problem might be, and it will save you hours of troubleshooting and uh, stress down the road. So in 2025, if you're looking to get into cloud or automation or, or anything that has to do with, with technology, I really go all the way back to the platform, Linux, as an operating system. Because of me as an automator, as an SRE, as a DevOps practitioner, almost always it comes back to the platform where the process is running. And more often than not, that platform is Linux. So if you want to get ahead, you want to get started, I would say start with the fundamentals, look at learning more about the Linux operating system. Data is a, you know, it's a big space, um, starting from just amassing lots of data to, to visualizing it. So really you can't be a generalist across that whole range and, and be successful. So I think work out what you want to do. Are you interested in the data and 
uh, parsing that data and cleansing it all up, then you, you know you probably want to be a data scientist and you're going to learn Python and Spark and all of those sorts of things. Or are you more a visual person and you want to say, how do I take this data and tell a story with it? Um, so you've got to choose you know, where you are on that scale and then dig in and have a little look at the, the skills required in each of those areas. So first of all, you need to learn what are the strengths of each one of the tools out there. And regarding the skills, it, it just makes sense to, to know the best practices about prompt engineering. So if you know about, you know, few shot prompting, you know, give some samples to the, uh, to the LLM so that it knows what you're looking for. Build better prompts. Uh, also, don't try to solve everything in a single go because the LLMs, they keep the context uh, although some context windows are a little bit short, but because they keep the context, you can start asking, just like you're asking a human being, like, hey, how you do this first? Give me the first step, then give me the second step. So, so that's the thing. You just need to learn how to work with an LLM to get the result that you want. And if you're not getting the result, just iterate and expand. It's not like the first answer and that's it. You can just keep iterating until you get something that's usable. There's several different levels, right? Um, developers can integrate, they can build. Um, that requires a different skill set. That requires some understanding of the inner workings of how these tools um, come up with their predictions, how they generate probability. Understanding it deeper makes it easier to implement the technologies. That's a, that's a different skill set than a developer, though development skills are, are necessary. It's just sort of an, an evolution on those skills. So there you're dealing with a little bit heavier math, reading more research papers, understanding the inner workings of, of how these things are, are done. Um, and there's a slew of training available for that uh, on both sides. Um, for people that are just wanting to use AI tools in their day to day, um, which is going to be the majority of the people. Um, I think the most important thing is to recognize what sets you apart from the machine. What makes you human? Um, your ability to have empathy, to have critical thinking, to take in all the context that you have as an expert in your domain. But when it comes to using the tools, the biggest thing is to understand how the systems work, understand their limitations, and then when you approach them, approach them with a desire to try again and again and iterate um, and to <laughs> have a good sense of humor about it because uh, the systems are not always right uh, and you have to think critically about it.